He's been near the top of the game for almost a decade, but the last year has proved a testing time for Croatia's Ivan Lubacic. Injury, a fall in the rankings, and his fair share of bad calls. I saw him as well. But the birth of his first child and his work for the ATP have given fresh perspective to a man who idolised Goran Ivanisevic and once even beat him. I remember when I was coming up, I said I, have, I had Goran in front of me, which was, you know, when won Wimbledon number two in the world and won 22 events. So I knew that if I don't do at least half of what he did, nobody's going to, well, not remember me, but, you know, that's not what you are there for. To be number two, it's not enough. Number three, it's, you have to be the best in the world in order for people to recognize that you actually did, did great in what you're doing. Goran's devastating serve led to inevitable comparisons with the big hitting Lubacic. But there the similarity ends. Oh, he was a charismatic character. I mean, he still is. And then wherever you go in the world, everybody knows Goran. It's just the way he was. He was, it was unique. And uh, I knew from the beginning that I'm not like him. I mean, it was totally different personalities, but we get along really, really well. I'm not curious. No. When, when I have a chance, uh, I, I like, as I said, I like being, being with kids. So it's, an, it's, as you said, it's a nice distraction. Uh, when I was a kid, I didn't have an opportunity to, to, to play with pro players or even to chat with them. So I hope they're going to make most of, most of it. Lubacic made the most of his options. The son of a Croatian father and a Bosnian mother, he fled war-torn former Yugoslavia at 13, keen to make up for lost time. So I watched Wimbledon, I remember it was back at Edberg match, so I said, you know, I would like to do this, I mean, out of blue. I mean, starting at age nine, it's quite late. I mean, all kids are starting four or five. And, and so I had to play catch up with them. It took me a while, but, uh, you know, immediately the coaches there and people around, around me saw that I was actually very talented for that sport, so here we are. Lubacic now finds himself the role model for a new crop of Croatia's tennis prodigies, like Marin Cilic. But the game has evolved since Ivan first made his big impact on the tour. I remember like 10 years ago when I was coming up, you would, you, I, I played Kafelnik and I won 6 one 6 in 45 minutes, he was number two in the world. So, you, you know, th this was happening, so whenever you were playing these guys, you could kind of hope that they could have a bad day. Today, that's not the case. Today, when you play these top guys, you know that you're going to have a hard time. Lubacic is a thinker who believes beating the best isn't about the tennis. It all depends on your ability to take the mental pressures. Hitting the ball well doesn't mean playing tennis well. That's, that's to for me, to totally different, different things. Guys who are ranked 40, and that's, that's kind of the ranking that you're looking at, like between 30 and 50. You have a few guys there that are hitting the ball unbelievable, and they can put in trouble a lot of top guys, but when it comes to winning matches, when it comes to making something to, to actually finish the match up, they, they, they don't know what to do on, on tennis court. It's not all glamour. Being a tennis player can be a lonely existence. I always like the idea that you are there on your own. You are there that you have to figure out how to win a match, how to get away, how to, you know, uh, what to do in, in a particular moments. And this is actually what I use in my match, when I go on the court, I also try to read my opponent mentally. Central to Ivan's success and consistency is his coach of 12 years, Riccardo Piatti. I believe a good trainer needs to know the athlete he's coaching. And to know them means to know them as a person and what they are capable of, both physically and technically. One thing that my coach, Riccardo Piatti, did very well throughout our career is that he did everything he could to make, to make me independent on him, on my parents, on my... to be... to become a really man. But Lubacic knows when the time will be right to say goodbye to the life on tour. You physically have to, you know, feel fit. You have to feel in yourself that you are ready to compete, that you can compete at the highest level. 
Honestly, if I feel that I can't beat any top 20 players, then I don't even see really the, the, the beautiful part of playing them. Yes, I love the sport, but you know, if you go out there and you have this bunch of players that, that you know that they're gonna just you know scratch you off the court, then I don't, you know, it's not really something that you enjoy. When he does make the decision to retire, Ivan Lubacic can be confident. He's written his own successful chapter in the history of Croatian tennis. Next week on ATP World Tour Uncovered, we have a special report from the Kremlin Cup in Moscow. American James Blake talks us through his roller coaster career and his desire to still do better. And Yevgeny Kafelnikov on the trials and tribulations of life after tennis. Don't forget to log on to ATPWorldTour.com for 24-7 coverage of the ATP World Tour. See you next time. <laughs>